I got a Berkey. I got a Berkey. Now let's assemble it. My travel Berkey was gifted to me by my wonderful viewer, Judy. Thank you, Judy. And there's a story behind that, you guys. You may or may not know that I was in the hospital in March. And it has to do with my traumatic brain injury and the scar tissue that's building up no longer creates pancreatic enzymes. And it's called EPI, exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, blah, 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 blah. Basically, it means that I'm on a very strict diet and I had not been a good girl in sticking to that diet. Well, what the heck does that have to do with water and my new travel Berkey? Well, I tell you what, I have a vintage class C and she is beautiful and I'm restoring her inside and out and the engine and everything about her and I love her. But like it or not, she's almost 40 years old and that includes my 35 gallon fresh water tank so a lot of people are just like buy bottled water don't uh, use your fresh water tank well that defeats the purpose for me of having an rv and keeping life simple and that's 35 gallons that i don't have access to and i get that i could just shower and use it for washing dishes and that type of thing but i use my spray bottle method for washing dishes anyway so yes i could use it for shower but i wanted to be able to use it for drinking water and i had been filtering it through my brita and i keep track of when i need to change my filters and everything so i'm very diligent about it but Judy got to thinking that maybe part of my intestinal gut issues might be my water. So she sent me a travel Berkey, and I am so grateful. Thanks again, Judy. Okay, now to assemble the Berkey. It comes with instructions, like four pages of instructions. And you guys know with my traumatic brain injury, reading comprehension is not my best skill. So Frugal RV Gal, my friend, she has a Berkey and she walked me through the basics of it. And then because I'm camped where I don't have a signal, I borrowed my friend Joan's phone to watch a couple of YouTube videos on the assembly of the Berkey and this is a travel Berkey the one and a half gallon so I think I have this down let's find out all right it comes with two charcoal filters and you have to purify them first they come with a lug nut I think that's what that's called on the end of it you take that off and then you put this just barely where that sits it, it's a groove to where this can sit down and this is because we are going to now purify the carbon filter. And the reason that you do that, my understanding is, is that otherwise it fills very slowly and it's just a fast action way to get all of the air out because these things come packed with the air. And you want to be very careful with them because if you crack them, it's a no-go. You've ruined your filter. So I'm trying not to drop this thing. And what they said was you just get a small flow and you can hear my hear, hear my pump <laughs> and hopefully that'll quit doing that but you get a, a, a small flow and you put and I'm gonna probably get soaking wet but you put this up against it as best you can until actually I'm gonna pull this over here because I can and you put that on there until it is flowing in there as much as possible. Can y'all see that? And see, I've got some coming out, and you don't want that. So I'm going to try this again. I may not be able to do it with this hybrid. There we go. So all of it is going into the filter now. None of it's splashing out. And you can see the water start bubbling out of there. And you want to do this, they said, for 30 to 40 seconds until you don't see any more air bubbles coming out of there. And so I don't know how long we are going to go, but that's what I'm gonna do <laughs> and try not to spray my whole RV on both filters to purify them before we continue the rest of the assembly. 
Okay, now that we've got that done, let's assemble the lid first. It comes with a cute little handle. I might get my friend Joan to help me, uh, or get her, not me, I can't paint yet, to uh, paint a mandala on the top of this. We'll see, but it, the screw and everything is already inside of there, and it just takes a simple Phillips head to get it out, I hope. I may need to get my glasses. There it comes. And should be able to come out the rest of the way just by finger. And it has a little bitty washer, so be careful. See this little bitty washer? <laughs> and so it stays on the this side of it to help hold it in place. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know which side that, that goes on now that I'm talking about it. Oh, I can see it sits down there in that bed. So it does go on the outside. So the lid is going to go between it and the screw. No, nope, it won't stay in there. So it does go... <laughs> Y'all are learning with me, right? It does go on the screw side, on the underside of the lid. And so we're going to drop that down in there, hold it in place, and finger tighten it and my understanding is you don't want to tighten this too tight because it can strip really easily so I'm just going to barely tighten that and voila my lid is ready let's go to the spout now there is a steel spout that you can order and this one is the plastic one and it comes you know I think you can see it it comes up like that like a normal tea spout and back down the metal one the stainless steel one that I saw twist and the way I'm going to be using this on my sink and I'll show you that at the end a twister one that twists side to side I don't think would work for me as well so I'm really glad that I have this one and it goes up and down so we're gonna get our base can and it's so pretty and shiny and one of the washers goes on the outside and we will check to make sure it's not leaking in a moment with just a little bit of water goes on the outside push it all the way down past the rings and then you insert it into the can I want to make sure I get that straight this is going to be a little more difficult to reach down in there than I thought. And then it comes with the, 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 this part of it. I don't know what that's called. Some sort of screw or bolt. I don't know all the technical terms. But this isn't going to be as easy as it looks. And then that other washer has to go on the inside there. So all I'm doing right now is holding this flat against the can hopefully straight and tightening that bolt or nut whatever that was I think that was a nut like me all right and it's not twisting and you don't use any tools it said do it by hand only and then I'm going to pour a little bit of water in here to see if it is not leaking Fingers crossed. Hello, Bendito. Okay, so it is above the spigot. And it is not leaking. It's working. Still not leaking. I'm going to shake it a little just to be sure because if I was driving down the road, it would get shaken a little. And it appears that I did okay. So, I am not going to waste that water. I am going to pour that into a pitcher and later put it in my Brita until this is ready. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. Next comes the installation of the carbon filters and there are two holes in the bottom of the, um, the part where you pour the water that you want to be filtered. I'm not sure again what the terminology is. 
but you stick that down there to go through that hole. But first you want to make sure that the rubber washer has not come off and is still on there. It has to be on the inside. And there you go. And see it is sticking through there. Can y'all see that? And it's quite long and there's a reason for that. The reason is, is because this is the only place that you want water dripping out. But again, I said finger tight only. And so I'm kind of pulling, I mean pushing, not pulling, pushing. Y'all are learning this with me. I could have practiced, but then I'd have had to take it all apart and I didn't want to have to do that. So you're learning it with me, but you want it to go flat. I think that's it. Nope. There. Now you can feel. I can actually tell now that it is flat. So we will do the other one. Some of the older models came with four holes, even the Travel Berkey, but this one only came with two and that's all you need. It take, uh, The Berkey, you can look it up, but it takes 99% uh, of pathogens out of water. You can even run dye through this and that is a good way later. No need to do it on a new uh, filter unless you're concerned that you dropped it or something and cracked it. But you can run red dye through it and uh, make sure that it is filtering out the red dye and uh, like put these over two mason jars and let that run through. And you, we're going to test in a minute to make sure that it is dripping from here. And that's where you get to see why the uh, screws are so long. Now, we'll screw that one down. Turn, turn, turn. Takes a while because the bolts are so long. And I'm going to show you the reason for that here in a moment. And again, pushing on the other side. I'm pushing against the filter on this side until that tightens up and you can tell when it's tightened up. Okay, now I'm going to hold this up here and show you the Berkey symbol because I'm so proud to have one. And you can see the screws sticking out underneath. And you want to make sure, so we're going to do another test with some water. You want to make sure that it is dripping only through those screws where the screws come down. That should be enough water. Turn that off. Takes a while for it to start to start dripping. But that should be the only place it drips. It shouldn't drip on the side of the screws. Only at the bottom of the screws. Can y'all see that? I wish I could hold something up behind there. Is my elbow in the way? So that y'all can see that it's dripping only from the screws. And it's not dripping on the around the side. Or anything just drip 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 that's how you know it's working and that you installed it correctly so I'm going to set that down let that keep dripping and I'm going to show you something that something else that Judy gave me that is so cool okay the other thing that she gave me and she had me measure first to make sure that it would fit under my cabinet is this stand so that when you put your water uh, can on it the spout is has room, but it's even more cool than that. Now this comes with it so that you can set it on the counter and it doesn't slide as easily, but it perfectly fits on the stand. See that? And then I can set my receiving can there. And then this goes on top of it that we have already dripping. See if it's still dripping correctly, and it is. So I'm going to set that right up here. And then my beautiful little lid, it's also pretty, goes in there. And I'll fill this up in a moment. But look, I can turn this and it fits right over my sink. So I can get something tall underneath there. I can get a pitcher. I can get a saucepan. I can get anything in there. because My sink is also deep, but the stand just makes it even more perfect. Now... I, the reason that I'm going to continue to use my Brita pitcher for a couple of days is because they recommend doing this two or three times, filling it up, 
and letting it go through two or three times before you actually start using the water. So I will fill this up now that I have it done correctly and let this fill up. And from now on, I know that regardless of what I am putting in there, it is 99% filtered of all pathogens. And thank you again, Judy. And I hope that you learned something from this. If you did, please share this video and be sure that you have subscribed to my channel, everybody, and click that bell to ring all so that you don't get just personalized notifications. Thank you for being on this journey with me and Bandit. And as always, keep on keeping on, and we'll see you down the road, everybody. Bye. Oh, hi. Me again. One more thing. One of the things I love about my rig and my sink that Tiki installed is that I can take my hose and fill her up from here and then put her right back on the stand, and I've got pure, clean water. In case you're wondering what my dog is doing, he is chasing the shadow of a cicada killer. It flies around over his head and all he sees is the shadow. And I have to bring him in to rest because he will do it for as long as his legs will let him stand. He just keeps chasing and chasing and chasing that shadow like a uh, laser for, you know, a laser point for a cat. <laughs>